for this painting, I want it to be a fairly loose, rough treatment of a waterfall, and I've just loosely based it on that reference photo and redesigned it. I thought I was making it a bit simpler, but it still uh, still fairly involved with a lot of shapes. And what you'll find with painting waterfalls is you, it's about 90% rocks and 10% actually painting water. So I used a bit of cobalt blue, very thin on on uh, dry paper. Put a touch of burnt sienna in it just to get a bit of warmth over there. So it's not all flat. It'll you know mix mix a little different gray combinations, just toning down the cobalt blue because it's pretty harsh all by itself. And I'm using a a squirrel hair blended synthetic um, mixed brush here. It's a big mop. Any kind of a mop is fine. You don't need that particular type of brush, but I find that squirrel hair by itself is really brutal. It just is limp and uh, there's no life to it, but putting the synthetic into it, it gives it some spring and it makes it quite manageable. A bit more burnt sienna for that. This is going to be a log there. So. All right, just let the let this stuff just run together for this first pass through. I added a little bit of violet. I thought it might uh, give some dimension to the color. It's not really necessary. This it's not going to be a very colorful painting. This it's a lot of brown rocks and uh, white water. <coughs> You can, I could have forced a lot more color into it, but I thought the, uh, it gets complicated enough if you just think in terms of uh, warm and cool, light and dark, and just get comfortable with handling this, these big bold washes on dry paper. I've switched over to um, ultramarine with burnt sienna. I can get it to go a little darker, a little easier. And just kind of reserve the cobalt blue for the shadows in the water. You can find little places that the, the paper's dry and you can get a hard edge. And I'm not terribly concerned at this stage if it, uh, if it wants to run into it. Here, I'll take a flat brush, just dampen it. I'm wiping it with my uh, paper towel here so that I can lift off just a little bit of light in some of these areas. Make a nice smooth edge where the water comes out of the corner. Lift a little off the highlight off that log. Just a good time now while it's, it's setting up and it's still wet. Just select a few spots that you can get some light stuff. Uh, now that it's totally dry, just mixing up a, a mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And you don't have to go very dark with this. It, because it's going over a wash that's already there, it'll go doubly dark. This way, by keeping a couple of puddles separate, I can uh, go back and get a different combination. A little browner sometimes, a little bluer other times. 
and I'll add to that puddle as I go as I need more paint. But I don't mix up just one big puddle, one color. Now I'll try to find the hard edge parts of these rocks. May go back to my uh, reference photo for ideas, but I've kind of abandoned the, the design of it now and developed my own. Softening the edge with a dry brush or you know, sweeping it as the brush dries out, you can see it sort of skips over the paper. Just a bit more burnt sienna for this log. And a little darker, add a bit more blue to get the bottom shadow of this log. Just give it some shape. And cut around it. By using the dark side of the rock to push that lock forward. Just thinking in terms of three values, a light side, a, me, uh, a medium side, and a dark side on these rocks. The light's coming from the top right. So I'm thinking bottom left will be my darkest side on most of these rocks. So maybe a little reflected light in here and there. This is a. This is just a about a quarter inch, about a three eighths inch, I guess, flat brush. All the numbers have worn off it, so I don't know exactly what it was when I bought it. But flat brushes last really well, so way outlast round brushes. They don't have that point that curls or wears down. Just pick a brush that's suited to the size of the job you're doing. You don't really need to have a specific sized brush. According to the supply list, you just uh, choose the job you want and then buy the brushes accordingly. Just developing the dimension here, light, medium, and dark. You can see already how much time you've spent on rocks compared to how much time we actually spent on the water. This is kind of an undercut, so that will be darker. It's the same two colors. Ultramarine burnt sienna. Just keep building them up. It's important to keep the dry brush work fairly quick. When your brush slows down uh, and becomes uncertain, it gets overworked very easily. So. I'm always thinking in terms of a freshness, even with a dark, um, 
kind of bland color scheme. It wants to still be a, a fresh brush stroke. Yeah, that's, I'm putting some cast shadows in here, but that uh, is going to be too dark. I'll just, I'll lift that a bit later. Now the same flat brush, just with a little bit of cobalt blue on a very dry. I need to start getting some shape, some action lines into the waterfall here, some direction to it. Without, without losing my white. Trying to find places where the rocks show through just a little bit. One way is take a round brush and flatten that out so that it spreads and you can get kind of a linear texture. Dry brush using it on the broad side and you can turn it to get thin lines. Just to help give this water some direction. Try to make it look like it though the water is actually around the stones, not that they're stuck on the top. This is a, a scrubber. I just cut off an old oil painting brush and I wet it and it loosens a bit of the watercolor and mop it up quickly so that um, I get little areas of light that show into the shadows and I'll just take a small brush kind of fluff up some of the splashes. I don't want to get too detailed with that. But I that's the lesson.